Welcome to My Vaccine is Jesus. Today's discussion is in the New Testament Treasures playlist of this YouTube channel and is entitled Sons of Thunder. Before we begin a short prayer, a blessing, honor, glory, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit for now and forever and unto ages of ages. Amen. I pray to the Triune God to be filled with the Holy Spirit, so and empowered to speak truth without error and to interpret Holy Scripture correctly. All truth comes from God, and the errors are my own. I also pray that you, the listener, may likewise be filled with the Holy Spirit so that any truth I speak or any scripture that I interpret correctly is welcome in your heart, your mind, and your soul. Now let us begin the discussion. Let's start in Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 through 22. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. As he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw two other brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. So there they are, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, the sons of thunder. Let's look at Mark 1, 16 through 20. Now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsake their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further thence, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets, and straightway called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, sons of thunder. Let's look at Mark chapter 3, verses 13 through 19. And he goeth up into a mountain and called unto him whom he would, and they came unto him, and he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might set sent them forth to preach, and to have power to heal sicknesses, and to cast out devils. And Simon he surnamed Peter, and James the son of Zebedee, and John the brother of James, and he surnamed them Boanerges, which is the sons of thunder. James the son of Zebedee, and John the brother of James, and he surnamed them Boanerges, which is the sons of thunder. Let's finish this, and then let's look into this sons of thunder concept. And Andrew, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him. And they went into an house. Let's so look at the Greek. There it is. Boaner, Boanerges. Boanerges. One occurrence right here. All right. It's actually of Chaldean origin. It's a combination of Ben and Regaz. And Regaz in Hebrew would refer to rage. So sons of thunder or sons of rage. Luke chapter 8 verses 49 to 56. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John. There they are, James and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her, but, she, but he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed in scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he pulled them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them that they should tell man, no man what was done. Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 8. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James and John his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart. And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, as in raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face, and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. Luke chapter 9, verses 51 to 56. And it came to pass, when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem, and set messengers before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him, because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of, for the Son of Man does not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. I think this is where Sons of Thunder comes from. Because notice, James and John, 
asked the Lord, Wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? Fire coming down from heaven could be lightning. Lightning is related to thunder, isn't it? Thunder, they make the sound. They make the sound. They have the rage. They want the thunder. They want to command lightning to come down and destroy these Samaritans. And Jesus says, no, I'm not, I've not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Just for interest, let's look back into the account of Elias or Elijah, right? Second Kings chapter 1, verses 1 through 4 here. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab, and Ahaziah fell down to a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria. Samaritans. Remember, when the kingdom broke up, the southern kingdom of Judah was ruled into Jerusalem, and the northern kingdom of Israel ended up being ruled in Samaria. And that's why later, when the ten tribes were destroyed by the Assyrians, the mongrel people, of basically Assyrians interbred with the Israelites, those of the ten tribes who remained, came to be known as Samaritans. And was sick, and he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. So notice the king of Israel in Samaria wants them to ask of Beelzebub whether or not he's going to recover. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, the Tishbite, right, Elias, Elijah, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, is it not because there is no God in Israel that you go to inquire bowels above the God of Ekron? Now therefore thus saith the Lord, thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but thou shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. Verses 5 through 8. And when the messengers turned back unto him, he said unto them, Why are ye now turned back? And they said unto him, There came a man up to meet us and said unto us, Go, turn again unto the king that sent you and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, it, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that thou sendest to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron. Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but thou shalt surely die. And he said unto them, What manner of man was he which came up to meet you and told you these words? And they answered him, He was an hairy man and girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. And he said, It is Elijah the Tishbite. He must wear a girdle of leather about his loins. Oh, that's right, John the Baptist. Elijah reborn, right? Second King chapter 1, now verses 9 through 10. Then the king sent up to him a captain of fifty with his fifty, and went up to meet him, or went up to him, sorry, and behold, he sat at the top of a hill, Elijah. And he spake unto him, Thou art man of God. The king hath said, Come down. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. This is what James and John were referring to. Verses 11 through 12. Again also he said unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty. And he answered and said unto him, O man of God, thus hath the king said, Come down quickly. And Elijah answered and said unto him, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. The second time. 13 through 16. And he sent again a captain of the third fifty with his fifty. And the third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty thy servants be precious in thy sight. Behold, there came fire down from heaven, burnt up the two captives of the former fifties with their fifty. Therefore, let my life now be precious in thy sight. The angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, Go down with him, be not afraid of him. And he rose and went down with him unto the king. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, For his Much as thou hast sent messengers to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron, is it not because there is no god in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore thou shalt not come down off that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. So all of this refers to why they are called sons of thunder, I believe. Matthew chapter 20, verses 20 through 23. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, right? We'll see her name is Salome, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She saith unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on thy left, in thy kingdom. Notice what she's asking. But Jesus answered and said, Ye not know, ye, ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup? Ye uh, is referring to the three of them. So ye would be the mother of Zebedee, Salome, James, and John. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptized that I am baptized with? They, the three of them, say unto him, We are able. And he saith unto them, Ye shall drink of my cup and be baptism with, baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left, it is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. So notice what she's asking. For kind of the greatest gift there is, for my two sons, the fruit of my womb, to sit on your right and your left in your eternal kingdom, the new heaven, the new earth, the new Jerusalem. Notice what she's asking. 
Mark chapter 10. Notice what the disciples, when they hear of this, what happens to the other 10. And when the 10 heard it, they began to be much displeased with James and John. But Jesus called to him and saith unto them, Ye know that they which are counted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Mark chapter 13, verses 3 to 8. As he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John, James and John again, and Andrew. Now this is interesting. You're seeing there's always Peter, James, and John, the three of them. Now there's the four of them. Why is there the four? It must mean something. Personally, whenever I see four, I think of the fourth day of creation and I think of the fourth commandment. The fourth commandment refers to the Sabbath. Our Sabbath is the finished work of Christ on the cross. The fourth day is when the sun, the moon, and the stars were created. The sun is a reference to Jesus Christ. The moon is a reference to the church, which reflects Jesus Christ. And the stars are refer references to angels, saints, um, prophets, etc. So to me, the four of them refer to kind of like the church, the finished work of Christ, which he gives over to the church. So that's how I personally look at it. Anyway, but there is a reason that these four, because you've seen this is the only time they're mentioned, the four of them. And notice what's referring to. Tell us, when shall these things be? He's talking about when the temple will be destroyed and the end of the age. And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And we, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be. But the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. This is getting into the discussion of the Great Tribulation, where if, you know, if it, if it, if it weren't for God's uh, rescuing us, no flesh would be saved. So is that why there's the four of them, the church, etc., the, 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 that will rest at that point and the second coming of Christ? There is a reason that the four are mentioned. Let's continue. Mark chapter 14, verses 32 through 42. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he saith to his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John. James and John again. Again with Peter. And began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. And saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping, and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou, couldest thou not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away, second time, and prayed and spake the same words. And he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither wist they what to answer him. And he cometh the third time, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up. Let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. Notice he prayed three times. John chapter 18, verses 15 through 18. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Hmm, who's this other disciple? That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. So notice, this disciple followed Jesus in to his uh, 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 interactions with the Sanhedrin and the high priest and Caiaphas, etc. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. And the servants and officers stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. So who's this disciple who would not abandon the Lord? Acts chapter 4, verses 1 through 8, and then skipping ahead to 13. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in, to, in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit men of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000, a lot of believers. And it came to pass on the morrow that their, that their rulers and elders and scribes, and Annas the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John and Alexander, and as many as were the kindred of the high priest. Oh, John was a member. Oh, so 
the disciple that was known to the high priest was John, were gathered together to Jerusalem, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked, for what power or by what name have ye done this? Then Peter, okay, so Peter's here, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, you rulers of the people and elders of Israel. Skipping into 13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, oh, okay, there's Peter and there's John. So that's, it was Peter and John. And by the way, over there in John 18, that was Peter and John too. And perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Matthew chapter 27, verse 55 and 56. And many women were there beholding afar off, which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him, among which was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joses and the mother of Zebedee's children. There she is who asked for this greatest of all possible gifts for her sons, James and John. Let's go to look at Mark 15, 40 and 41. There were also women looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the less and of Joseph and Salome. So it's Salome, who also when he was, went in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him and many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem. So notice these are women at the crucifixion site, but afar off. So they're Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joses, and Salome. Remember those three ladies. So they are far off. Let's look at John chapter 19 verses 23 to 27. Then the soldiers, when they crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, to every soldier part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which, say, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciple standing by whom he loved, John, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. So he tells John to look at Mary, and that's his new mother. Now check this out. Look who's here at the cross. Mary the Theotokos, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. Notice who's not here, Salome, the mother of James and John. So that same woman who asked the Lord for the greatest of possible gifts and who was there afar off with Mary, the wife of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene, when those two ladies I just mentioned saw the Theotokos at the side of Christ at the foot of the cross, they went to be with her and that's why they're here. Notice who didn't come, Salome. So was she going to be baptized with the baptism of Christ? I don't think so. John chapter 21. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples of the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter, and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana and Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, James and John, and two other of his disciples. Five named disciples and two unnamed disciples. Simon Peter saith unto him, They go a fishing. They said, Say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered to a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. John chapter 21. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved. John, following, which also leaned on the breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Referring to Peter. Jesus saith unto him, to Peter, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is it that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went the saying abroad among the brethren that, the, that that disciple should not die. Again, referring to John. Yet Jesus said not unto him, he shall not die. But if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Understand that all the disciples ended up being sacrificing themselves as lambs other than John. John died a natural death. The legend of the church goes that they, the Romans tried to kill him so many times and he couldn't die, and that's why they sent him in exile to the island of Patmos. Understand, again, John never betrayed Jesus. He did flee when Judas came, but he, he, went, he went to the Sanhedrin. Remember, Peter didn't go, did not go in with him. He interacted. He was there at the side of the Lord when the Lord was being rebuked and insulted and slapped and spit on by the Sanhedrin and their soldiers. And he was at the foot of the cross with the Theotokos, wasn't he? Acts chapter 11, verses 27 to 30, and then skipping to Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch, and there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be great dearth throughout the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Now about, the t about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother John, with a sword. So notice, who was the first of the eleven killed? It was James. 
And then, interestingly, John was never killed. And because he sought please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison, delivered him to four quaternions, a soldier to keep him attending after Easter to bring forth to the people. Easter would be the um, Passover. Revelation chapter 1, last slide. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit of the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it to thee unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. So there's are the sons of thunder, the holy disciples, St. James and St. John, sons of Zebedee, sons of Salome, sons of thunder. I pray spoke truth and interpret Holy Scripture correctly so that this discussion might have been a blessing to you, the listener. All truth comes from God. Any errors were my own. If it was a blessing to you, I would greatly appreciate it. If you could like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Lord willing, we shall meet again. May the Holy Trinity bless us all.